Father, as we come to you today, I pray that your Holy Spirit will be with us, that you'll guide us and direct us toward you. Help us to see the church that you want us to be. We know that you have a vision for your church and that you are accomplishing that through your people. We pray that we'll be open to allow you to lead us uh, by that spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we have been talking about engaging God, engaging each other, and engaging the world. So engaging God first, we don't do that on our own, right? God comes to us, and he engages us through his word, and he engages us through the sacraments, and he engages us as we come together as God's people. But as we engage God, it's not just a solo thing. I don't do it by myself. It's something that I also do with others. I'm connected with others. And so we engage each other as the body of Christ. We love one another and we build those relationships and we, we encourage each other. You know, whether it be the folks here, you know, in our service or whether it be our, our um, Hispanic brothers and sisters. You know, we want to build those relationships so we grow as the people of God together. And then, you know, as God works in our hearts... We can't just keep it for ourselves, right? Then God calls us to go out and to engage the world, to get out into the world. But what's the end game? You know, when you're, you're talking about something, you, you like to think, you know, where, where is this all going? Where is God taking us with this? There's a story, and I'm sure some of you have heard it before. There were three guys that were laying bricks, and somebody walked up to them coming outside. This is an ancient... Um, a long time ago in Europe, and he saw the first guy, and he's laying bricks, and he's not making very much progress, but he says, what are you doing? He says, well, I have to eat, right? I have to eat, so I'm, I'm laying bricks so that I can get some money, so that I can get some food, and I, I get a full belly. And then the next guy, he's doing a little better. He says, what are you doing? He says, well, I'm building a wall. Can't you see? This is a wall. See how it's coming together? There's a wall there. And the third guy, he's just going at it really, really hard, and he says, what are you doing? He says, well, I'm building the cathedral. See, he had a vision. He knew what he was doing. When he's building this, these bricks, it's not just laying bricks. He knew why he was doing that. So the question comes for us, you know, what is the end game? What is God doing with us as we, as we live as his people in Monroe, Washington? What is his goal? And I think we have to go to the last book of the Bible to see what his goal is. And read it with me. After this, I looked. And there was a vast multitude from every nation, tribe, people, and language, which no one could number, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. Yeah, God's vision is that God's people, all the people of the world that follow Jesus will be brought together on that final day to stand before the Lamb, to give worship to God. I mean, that's the church. The church is not just a, a group, you know, a little group of, of, of Hispanic people over here worshiping and a little group of, you know, of, of us white people over here worshiping and another group over there of some. No, it's God's people together worshiping the Lamb who has brought us salvation. And you might say, well, you know, it's okay. You know, Monroe, it's a, it, 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 it's a pretty white place is what we always think. But the fact is it's not anymore. Monroe has changed. Did you know that 20 years ago, 20 years ago, about 80-some percent, and it's actually 2011, so it's 10 years ago, about 86 or 87 percent of the people in Monroe were just normal, you know, the, 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 the people that had been here for a lot of years, right? But it's changing. It's changing. How did I get ahead? Did I lose it? Boy, what happened? It's just going ahead of me. We have to fix that. Oh, man, it's trying to... Okay, Brad, it doesn't want to stay there. I want to stay on that one right there, that one. If you can stop it there for me, I appreciate it. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> Isn't that fun? You know? I love technology. Anyway, it's got a transition there. But the point, of, what, what the point of that slide is this. You know, our world is not the same that it used to be. Did you know that in Monroe today, that there are over 900 black people living amongst us? Did you know that? 
Did you know that in Monroe, there's over 500 Asian people that live in, in the city of Monroe? We're not just talking about Snohomish, and then you go out further, and there's more and more. And there's 3,500 people that are, are Latinos, people like our brothers and sisters here. I mean, this is not the same. If you add those numbers together, there's more people in Monroe um, that are black and Asian and native and all of those different groups of people than there were in 1980 in all of Monroe with all the people, or 1990 than all of the people. So our world is changing. But we look at our church and we go, well, you know, it's great. We've got our brothers and sisters, our Hispanic brothers and sisters, but God wants us to be connected with all sorts of different people. And how do we reach out to them? How do we reach out and say, Lord, you know, your church, we know that at the end day, we're all going to be worshiping together. But how do we invite people into the, into the church so that we're worshiping together now? That's the call. Um, yeah, it's got transition things. There's the one right there. So we'll, we're having fun with the PowerPoint today, aren't we, Brad? That's a <laughs> I don't know what I did there. Anyway. Okay. So anyway, so if you, if you look at that, I mean, those are the different groups of people in our church. But God wants peace to be a multi-ethnic community of Jesus' followers. He really wants that. Because why? Because we're the body of Christ, and the body of Christ looks like that. And it's not just about, like, tokenism. We're going to try to get some people to be in our church so that we, we, we check a box. But God wants us really to love people from all nations and all backgrounds. He wants us to be a place where people can come and worship God together. But the question is, why would, say, an African-American person, an Asian person, a Latino person, a Native person, why would they want to come here and be a part of our church? And I think about that. You know, if, if somebody's just walking along and they go, oh, Peace Lutheran Church, I think I'll wander in there. And then if they did come into our church, would they feel comfortable? Would they feel loved? I hope so. I mean, I hope that's what would happen. But I don't think people are just going to wander in off the street. I think we have to find ways to be able to reach out into our world. We can't sit in the church and say, well, we'd welcome people if they just come in. You know, if they just come in, we'd welcome them. No, we've got to find ways to reach out into the world around us. And I think that starts with this. The first step is to change is prayer. The first thing that has to change is we, have to, we come before the Lord to pray. It's like a guy that is struggling with diabetes, right? He's struggling with diabetes, and so he says, Lord, I, I really need to deal with my diabetes. Would you please just, would you just please heal me of this diabetes? And of course, the Lord can step down and take care of that. Just, boop, all of a sudden his blood sugar is all right. But normally what happens is then the Lord moves in his heart and he says, look, you know, you're going to have to start changing your diet. And as he, as he prays, the Lord starts to move in his heart and say, I'm going to have to eat differently than I used to. And then the Lord works in his heart to say, I'm going to have to get more disciplined about exercise. Instead of once a month, I'm going to have to do it every, you know, three times a week or something like that. And the person then says, okay, I'm going to have to lower stress in my life. And so as he works on his relationship with the Lord, the stress lowers. And the Lord truly does deal with his diabetes, but it's a process of changing him. And it's the same thing for us. If we want people to come and be a part of our church, we've got to work on the things inside of us that are our blocks. And we don't even know what those are. So it starts with us praying and saying, Lord, lead us, direct us, help us figure out how to be the people that you want us to be. And the next start, part of that is it takes radical humility to become a community that truly welcomes people from other backgrounds. You can't sit in your church and say, well, I hope people come. You know, I hope people come. We've got it figured out. You've got to do it our way. No. If you're going to invite other people, you've got to be able to, to really listen to other people. Really listen. You know, you know what, what, what are your needs? Who are you? How can we love you? You can't know how to love somebody if you don't talk to them, if you don't listen to them. And this is what we talked about, the word engage, right? And then as you listen, it comes to a point of understanding. Oh, I understand this person. I understand who they are. I understand what their needs are. And so now as I've listened to them and I understand them, then finally we respond. And part of that respond is the hard part because sometimes we have to change. And sometimes we have to change things that, that you know, we kind of never wanted to change. But why do we change? Because we love people. And so we're willing to make the, the adjustments. We don't change the gospel. We don't change the fact that Jesus came and died for us. I mean, that, that's, that's unchangeable. 
what Jesus has done for us. But sometimes the style of the way we do things has to change, and our attitudes sometimes have to change so that people feel welcome and they feel loved and they feel a part of our community. Because God calls us to do that because we're supposed to be a community from every language, nation, and tribe. And this is the other thing. We need to, people feel welcome in an atmosphere of genuine love and acceptance. When you love and accept people where they are, it's not our job to change people. That's Jesus' job. Our job is to love and embrace people with that love. Reminds me of the story of this little boy, and he would, he would walk to a church on the other side of town. Just a little guy, and he'd walk to church every week. And so this guy's watching him every week. He walks out, and he walks, and he walks miles across town to go to this church. And he says to the little guy, what are you doing? He says, there's lots of Sunday schools along the way. Why do you have to walk all the way across town to go to that Sunday school? And he says, because they love a fellow over there. They love a fellow over there. We want to be that church that people come here and say, yeah, you know, Peace Lutheran Church, that's a place where, you, where people love you, where they love you, where they really, really show you the love of Jesus. And as we truly love people and welcome them into our midst, people will feel more comfortable. We said, talked about this last week, but redemptive relationships are key to becoming the congregation God wants us to be. Anybody remember from last week what redemption, re redemptive relationships, what I mean when I say that? Anybody remember that term? Those are relationships in which Jesus reaches through us to draw people to himself, right? That's a redemptive relationship. And this is not, this is not like trying to trick people into coming to church, you know, I'm going to be your friend because I want you to come to my church. No, this is really becoming a friend with somebody, really loving somebody, getting to know who they are. And through that, Jesus will do the work of reaching and grabbing and pulling and saying, hey, there's something special that I have for you. This person that is, is you, a sinful, messed up human being just like me, as you form relationships with other people and your life is oriented towards Jesus, Jesus will help other people to also orient their life towards Jesus. That's what he calls us to do, to form those relationships with people. So how do we start? How do you, I mean, how do you start that? I mean, you know, we made friends a long time ago. We've got a set of friends. How do you start to make new friends? I mean, it seems, seems pretty simple. But the first thing, this is really easy. It starts with something simple like a smile. You know, you see, you meet somebody when you go to the grocery store, when you're walking down the street, when you're walking around the town, and you see somebody, smile at people and say hello. Just say hello. And, and then, I mean, you can, you can find other ways to, to reach out. Like, we, we sent the cards to our, our Asian brothers and sisters. We've been sending those cards to them to say we're glad you're in the community. We did that as a church, but you can also do it as an individual. You know, if you, if you know somebody in the community, whether it's an Asian person, whether it's a white person, whether it's a Latino person, and you could just send them a card and say, hey, I am so glad you're a part of our community. I just, I'm just so happy you're here. And maybe you don't use those words. You could say whatever. But it just says, hey, I'm open to a relationship with you, and I want to reach out to you. I want to, to be in a relationship with you. And then you just start a conversation. This is, this is not rocket science, right? You guys have, have known this for your whole life. But really, sometimes we form a lot of relationships when we're young, and then we kind of get our relationships, and we forget that we're still called to build those relationships because God works through them as we get older. And so finding new people to invite into our world and to, to, for us to go into their world and understand that world. And then this, listen, listen, listen. It's so easy for us to want to tell people what they need to know, right? But as God's people, we want to have, God gave us two ears for a purpose, right? He gives us one mouth so we're supposed to talk about half as much as we speak. Most people get that backwards. But we want to listen. Listen to people. Understand their stories. Understand who they are. And this is really important. Invite future interactions. <laughs> you know, if you want to have a relationship with somebody, you know, I, and, and, and I'm struggle, I, I, work, I struggle with this a little bit because it's real easy. I meet somebody, I talk to them, we have a real good conversation, and then I never see them again, especially in Monroe because, you know, it's not like Copper Center, Alaska, where everybody, you know everybody. Um, so there's a lot of these people where it's a one-off. But you can invite people and say, hey, I, I, I'd like to connect with you again. You know, can, can we have coffee? Can we have, you know, can we just get together? And, and finding ways to build those relationships. Now, certainly, you're going to have people in your circle of people already. 
But if we want to become the people that God wants us to be, it also includes stepping out of our comfort zone to form relationships with people that are different than us. And the really cool thing about that is, is that as you get to know people from other cultures and other backgrounds, you are so blessed by it. It expands who you are. You become, uh, it's, God uses that to make you just, it, it, to just bless you. And so this is not like a terrible thing. It's hard sometimes to take the first step, but when you do it, God uses that to bless you. Read with me. They were robed in white robe, clothed in white, white robes with palm branches in their hands, and they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated at the throne and to the Lamb. The end game is that God's people from every language, from every tribe, from every nation, join together and worship and honor him. We become one people as God's people and it's going to be people from all around the world. We don't have to do all the work. But here in Monroe, we're God's people. And we want to invite our brothers and sisters, no matter what their background is, into our community and say, we love you. And we want to grow with you to be more like Jesus. We don't have it all figured out. But as we walk with you, Jesus will help us figure it out. And I think that's where God wants to take us as his people. Any comments or thoughts? Love one another. Amen. Amen. Yep. And that, that love one another includes all the others, not just, the, not just the person next to me. We certainly love the person next to me, but it's all the people that God has put in front of us. Thank you, Betty. Let's pray. Anybody else? Okay, let's review. God wants peace to be a, a multi-ethnic community of Jesus followers. Prayer is the first step to change. It takes radical humility to become a community that truly welcomes people from other backgrounds. People will feel welcome in an atmosphere of genuine love and acceptance. Redemptive relationships are the key to becoming the congregation God wants us to be. Thank you, Karen. All right. So now as we've thought about these things, how is it going to be different for us? How is God going to use this to make us, um, what's he going to do in your life with the message that you've heard? Reach out. Reach out. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, just take baby steps. Mm -hmm. Be willing to change. Yeah, thank you, Betty. Yeah, that's a hard one, isn't it? Because I mean, I, I struggle with that. It's hard to be willing to change. But sometimes God calls us to that. Let's pray. Father, we know um, what your plan is, that you're going to gather people from every nation, from every language, from every tribe, from every people. And we pray that we can be a part of that, Lord, that as we see our neighbors, that we will have a community of believers here at Peace Lutheran Church that just loves people, that loves people no matter what their background is, that will reach out, reach out across some of those lines that our society has drawn and uh, allow us to truly become uh, a congregation that reflects that beautiful, uh, beautiful picture of Revelation 7 where people from every nation gather together to praise you and to honor you for the salvation that you've given us in Jesus. In his name we pray, amen.